okay math 31 let's let's try this now you can see I left a lot of vertical space here to do example a and to do example B so so let's get going with this so the first thing I want to do is get my u substitution now this is the exact equation that we did in example 7 but just to remind you whatever your middle term is whatever will eventually become your linear term and I put that in quote marks it's not linear just yet um, that's going to be your u sub so I'm going to let u equal x minus 3 to the 1 fourth and then you need to figure out what u squared is equal to and we dis we established that it's x minus 3 to the 1 half and as long as these exponents line up with the ones you're given you can use this this method so I can rewrite this this equation with just u's in it and I get u squared minus 6u plus 8 is equal to 0. Great! Now I can opt to factor this, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula. And since it's relatively easy to factor, I'm just going to factor it. And I'm going to get u minus 4 times u minus 2 is equal to 0. And when I solve that, I'm going to get u is equal to 4 or u is equal to 2. And it would be awesome if this was it. Just like, oh hey, I'm done. But you started the equation in x's, so you can't end in u's. You have to sub back. You have to end in x's. So we need to figure out, well, if u is equal to 4, what was x equal to? So now we're going to back sub. Instead of writing u, I'm going to write x minus 3 to the 1 fourth. So I'm now going to have x minus 3 to the 1 fourth is equal to 4, or x minus 3 to the 1 fourth is equal to 2. So I'm going to scoot the page up so that we can start to see this happening. All right, so let's see how we're working here. I've got x minus 3 to the 1 fourth is equal to 4, or x minus 3 to the 1 fourth is equal to 2. So now we have an equation with a rational exponent. And this takes us all the way back to example one from this section, where we want to isolate this, or excuse me, we want to undo this rational exponent and we're going to use reciprocals. I, I was saying isolate because technically you want to isolate the term with the rational exponent, but it already is isolated. It's all here on the left side of the equation by itself, so I don't actually need to isolate anything because it came to me that way. All right, now let's go ahead and raise both sides of this equation to the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. All right, so let me move this up. I'm still going to need a little bit more space. These always tend to take a lot of room. All right, so a power raised to power, I'm going to multiply these two exponents. And they're going to cancel out because they are reciprocals of one another. And that was by design. So I'm going to get x minus 3 equaling 4 to the 4th, or x minus 3 equaling 2 to the 4th. Well, 4 to the 4th is 256. 2 to the 4th is 16. So when I solve this, I'm going to get x is equal to 259. Oops, excuse me. Or x could be equal to 19. And those would wind up being my solutions. So again, if I start in x's, I need to end in x's. I'm going to scooch back up. I'm not sure if I can get all of this. I can barely get it in the same view screen. Started in x's, ended in x's. So my two solutions here are either 19 or 259. So let me go ahead and write that up for us. And this isn't to say this is 19,259, it's just either 19 or 259. All right, so with that, let's practice a completely new problem over an example 8b. So now I'm going to scooch back up so we've got this in view. All right, so I don't have a quadratic equation here because I have a fourth degree polynomial, but I do have a squared here. And it looks great because this exponent is half of this exponent. So for this u substitution, again, I want to let it equal whatever the would-be linear term is. So this would be x squared, and then u squared would be x to the fourth. 
All right, so as we're looking at this, instead of 12x to the fourth, I'm going to write 12u squared. Instead of minus 11x squared, I'm gonna write minus 11u, and then I'm gonna write plus two, okay? Now, it's your call. Again, you could factor, you could complete the square, or you could use the quadratic formula. So once you're here, you have those three methods, factor, complete the square, or quadratic formula. Now, these last two, they always work. Right? It's the factoring. Sometimes a, a quadratic can factor, and sometimes it's prime. But completing the square and the quadratic formula always work. And if you prefer right now to use a quadratic formula, go for it. You will get the same answer I do. It's just gonna take you a little bit longer. I'm gonna try factoring here, and I'm gonna just guess and check. All right, so 12u squared, that could be 4u and 3u, 6u and 2u. I, I like to start in the middle. I'm gonna try 4u and 3u. On the upside, two, there's only a couple things that multiply to two, so let's just try two and one. If I looked at outer right now, that'd be 4u, inner would be 6u. I can't get 4u and 6u to turn into negative 11u, so this wasn't it. Let me try flip-flopping them. And if it doesn't work here, I might just go to the quadratic formula. I might be done with guess and check. Let's see, we got one and two. Oh, this is gonna work though. I can see three U here and eight U here. So how do I get them to negative 11 U? I need a negative on both of those. And let me just check. It is true that negative one times negative two is positive two, so I have unlocked it. Okay, so from here I can use the zero product property. So either 4u minus one equals zero, or 3u minus two is equal to zero. If I solve for u, I'm gonna add one to both sides and then divide by four, so I will get u is equal to one fourth, or u is equal to two thirds. And again, that's all fine and good, right? We get pretty pumped because we're like, sweet, I got some answers. But the problem is you didn't start with u's, you started with x's, so you need to sub back. So here we go, we know x squared is equal to 1 fourth, or x squared is equal to 2 thirds, because that's what u is equal to. So let's do x squared would equal 1 fourth, or x squared would equal 2 thirds. Okay, so how do we undo this squaring? Well, we're gonna square root both sides. So if I square root both sides of this, if we remember from section 2.5, the plus or minus needs to show up. So I have x will equal plus or minus the square root of 1 fourth, or x will equal plus or minus the square root of 2 thirds. All right, now I'm gonna scooch this up a bit, because again, we're running out of room. These tend to take a while. That's why I gave us all of that space. So I'll just put it right about here. Okay. If I want to simplify this a little bit, these at least are both perfect squares. The square root of one is one, and the square root of four is two, so I'm gonna get plus or minus one half here. These are not perfect squares, which is fine. I can distribute a radical over division, and we've mentioned before that math folks can't stand when you have radicals left in the denominator, so I need to multiply this answer by its conjugate or really not its conjugate so much as just root three over root three. So if we take a look at this, I'm looking at square root of two times square root of three is the square root of six over three. All right, so my four solutions are one half, negative one half, square root of six over three, and negative square root of six over three. All right, so that's a pretty intense problem, but keep in mind, I did get four solutions, right? One, two, three, four. And if I scooch way back up, way back up, there it is. Let me get that all in view. All right, I did have a quartic, right? And typically when you have a degree four polynomial, you're gonna have four answers. There's times when roots double up and triple up, but it's, it's less common. All right, so with that, we have learned a bunch in this section. Let me just remind you where we, were, we started, right? We started with solving equations with rational exponents, right? Isolate that rational term 
and use reciprocals to solve for it. Then we, we took a look at factoring by grouping. All right, we solved some radical equations where we isolated a radical. We solved some absolute value equations. We isolated the absolute value term. And then last but not least, we're just finishing up through solving equations through quadratic form. So there's a whole bunch to unpack in section 2.6. It really has a pretty large scope. All right, so with that, we're gonna turn over to linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities in section 2.7. I'll see you in a few, bye.